What we want to talk about next is hedging. More in detail, we talked about it already, but we'll be more precise here. And we are going to start with um, kind of traditional hedging going way back 50 years ago or more uh, before uh, option pricing theory, before dynamic continuous time or multi-period models. In particular, the first thing we are going to talk about is static hedging, meaning uh, there is some payoff that you want to uh, hedge in the future, uh, but the way you do it, you just take some positions at time zero uh, uh, and once, static, and then you don't do anything until maturity. Okay, and futures are, are particularly convenient for that because futures markets are liquid, the bid ask spreads are, are narrow, uh, so people uh, use futures a lot for hedging. This is going to be mathematically easier than uh, there is not going to be any brown in motion because we are doing a static model. All right. Now, there is a perfect situation in which you simply can buy uh, or sell the futures contract that is exactly on uh, the payoff that you have to deliver or you will receive at maturity. Uh, for example, you know, you need uh, uh, you need to have 5,000 euros three months from now and uh, you can buy exactly the futures contract on uh, euros and on three months from now. Okay, Then you will have a perfect hedge. Uh, exactly the asset you want to hedge and exactly the maturity you need. Uh, if that one of these is not the case, maybe it's uh, an asset on which there is no futures contract or maybe you cannot find the maturity that you need, then we talk about asset mismatch or maturity mismatch uh, and uh, the way you hedge it's called cross hedging it's just a fancy name for uh, hedging with uh, some other futures contract which is not exactly uh, the one that you need and let's do that case the the perfect case is easy you just buy or sell the futures contract that you need the other case is more interesting, and uh, here is some notation. For example, you need to either deliver or you will receive a payoff S1 of capital T. Think of it as some asset, maybe whether it's a stock or something else, maybe exchange rate. We will have an example like that. And you hedge it potentially with a futures contract on some other asset too so that's why I call the futures here contract F2 and maybe the maturity is not the same maybe the maturity of the futures contract is U which is larger or equal than the maturity at which you will receive or pay this and the difference so you're going to what we want to find is the optimal number of futures contract to go either long or short depending on whether you have to receive or, or uh, pay the, the asset S1 of T. So delta is going to be the name for the, the notation for the number of futures contracts. And we look at the difference. Call it X, that's called usually basis in futures terminology. Uh, so X is uh, the difference between what you want to hedge and uh, the futures contract with which you are doing the hedging. And the way we are going to do the optimization, we are going to measure the error in terms of the variance. We will want to minimize the variance of x. Want to we want to minimize the variance of x. Uh, in that way, we, we, that's kind of measuring the distance in terms of random randomness of random variables how much your futures contracts are far away uh, from your target, which is S1 of capital T. And mathematically, it's a tractable way. It also makes intuitive sense to minimize the variance, kind of minimizing squared error, expected squared error. Let's compute the variance. So what I have here is simply a general formula for the variance of a difference of two random variables variance I just denote here that it's from the point of view of time t so the variance is going to be the sum of the variances variance of s1 
delta goes with a square, so delta squared variance of f2. And because of the minus sign, I have minus twice the covariance. Now delta goes just out of the covariance, and then the covariance of s1 and f2. All right, that's just the usual formula from your probability theory uh, on, uh, on, the co on the variance of a difference of two random variables. Just to remind you, uh, the formula for a covariance of two random variables, so, so co let me just do it up here. So covariance of x and y, by definition, is expectation of x times y minus expectation of x times expectation of y. Okay, so it's a <coughs> it's a expected value of the product minus the product of expectations. Okay, and now we want to minimize this with respect to delta. That's easy calculus now. It's a quadratic function in delta. Uh, I take a derivative and uh, put it equal to zero. Set it equal to zero. Derivative, this doesn't depend on delta. This doesn't. Uh, so this here will become 2 delta variance of f2 minus 2 delta will disappear when you take a derivative covariance. Okay, so it's going to be delta is going to be covariance over the variance. It's covariance of s1 and f2 with the variance of f2. That's the formula for our optimal uh, optimal number of uh, uh, futures contracts to hold when hedging S1 at capital T. Here I have a, a more succinct uh, notation, just again to remind you, in terms of the correlation row, so just to remind you what correlation is. So rho of x and y, uh, here I just use rho without, put, without mentioning the random variables, so rho x and y, by definition, is covariance of x and y over the product of standard deviations, which I will write sigma x, sigma y. Okay. So square roots of variance is standard deviations. So if you, from here, co covariance is equal to rho times sigma x, sigma y, Right, so so if I do that here, it's gonna be uh, rho times uh, sigma s, which is s one. I'll just I'm just writing s times sigma uh, f f two, but I'm just writing f two over over variance of f two, so over sigma f squared. Okay, if you write it in terms of correlation and use this relationship between correlation and covariance, this is what you get. Now sigma f will cancel one sigma f here, and that's, that's why I get this rho sigma s over sigma f. All right, just a different way to, to write the optimal uh, number of futures contracts to enter. By the way, if you are familiar with uh, regressions in statistics, uh, this is really nothing else but the uh, regression coefficient in linear regression when you regress one random variable on, on another, because in regression you're also minimizing the squared error, and you, you get uh, the same formula for the re regression coefficient. Okay, let's, uh, let's compute what the optimal variance is, the minimal variance is, how do we do that? We will going to substitute this formula for delta uh, here, instead of delta here, put um, this expression for delta and also here. And then it's easy algebra to compute it, and I have the formula on the next slide. And what we get, let's look at it. You get this. You get that the optimal or the minimal variance is the variance of S1 minus covariance squared over variance of F2. Just to give a little bit of intuition uh, that this formula makes sense, 
let's look at the extreme case of the of the perfect hedge. In other words, let's assume that we can exactly hedge uh, with the futures contract on S1. So let's assume S1 is S2, where, where S2 is the is the asset on which the futures contract is written. And let's assume that the maturity is also the right one, that capital U is in fact capital T. Uh, then let's see what I have then. Uh, if I go back to the formula for optimal delta, I will have covariance of S1 and this would be F1 at U. Uh, actually, that was on the next slide, right? S1 of t, we know from before, is equal to F1 of t. At maturity, the futures price and the spot price become one and the same, right? Otherwise, that would be arbitrage. The futures price of a futures contract that immediately matures is simply the spot price. And because the maturity u is equal to t and 1 is equal to 2, S1 is equal to S2, this is just F2 of TU. So F2 of TU in my formula in the previous slide is going to be just S1 of T. So if I use that and go back, I have covariance of S1 and S1 over the variance of S1, S1 again. Okay? Uh, and what is that? What is the covariance of S1 and S1? In general, what is the covariance of x and x? Well, intuitively, it should be the variance, but you can also check that from the definition, right? It's e of uh, x times x, which is x squared, minus e of x times e of x, which is e of x squared, and that's by definition the variance of x. Right, so the covariance of x with x is the variance, so that means that uh, in that case, if I have perfect hedge, uh, then uh, the uh, numerator there is covariance of S1 and S1, and um, therefore it's equal to variance of S1 squared. Uh, so, sorry, not squared, it's just a uh, variance of S1 over variance of S1 again, so it's just 1. Yeah, delta is just 1. Which makes complete sense if you can hedge exactly with the futures contract on that asset with the same maturity, uh, you should just, for each unit of the asset, you should buy or sell uh, one unit of the futures contract. So delta is 1. And just to check that uh, in this extreme case the, the formula makes sense. In general, we see that you get, so that's delta, right? Delta is one. How about the minimal variance? Uh, well, the minimal variance is going to be, so the covariance of S1 and S1, that's variance squared. I have a square here. It's gonna be variance squared over variance. It's just the variance, and I have a variance minus variance the minimal variance is going to be zero. There is no error. There is no risk involved if I can buy exactly the futures contract with exact matru maturity and exact asset that I need. It, the the uh, minimal variance is just going to be zero. Variance squared over variance, it's variance minus variance, zero. Okay, that's the extreme case. In general, what we see you you reduce the risk of holding S1, right? This would, be, this would be the risk that you are exposed to if you don't hedge. Just the variance of S1 of T, this is the risk if you don't hedge. Now if you hedge, you subtract something. A and that something is going to be higher, which means lower risk because I'm subtracting it going to be higher the higher the correlation or the covariance is between the original asset and the asset uh, of, with the, which you are hedging, right? which makes again intuitively sense. more correlation you have, the better uh, the less risk you have in terms of hedging, better you can approximate your random payoff uh, with the, your futures contract. 
All right. Uh, this is this is uh, the general formula. Let's do an example.